Hi, a blessed day to all. I'm hoping that all of you are doing well in your studies and were able to adjust in this new normal of learning. I'm praying that all of you are safe and healthy along with your families and loved ones. So do not forget to pray to God to ask for God's protection and guidance. And of course, to thank Him for all the blessings you receive despite these trying times. So, moving on to our topic for this week, we have three more topics to be discussed by group 7 and 8 about the theory of um, Rosemary Rizzo Parse and the theory of Imogen King, while I'll be discussing the theory of Ernestine Wiedenbach. Three topics siya before your long exam week and your midterm week. So, I hope marami pang mga extra space dyan sa inyong storage storage ng inyong brain to, uh, to, to accept additional knowledge and to process information and concepts. Okay. So, within back, develop the theory of the helping art of clinical nursing. So, let us see or let us watch the background of written back by watching this video clip so enjoy watching
actually summarizes the theory of Friedenbach. So moving on to discuss it further, let us look at how a Wittenbach viewed the four major concepts of nursing or the four major concepts of a theory that includes nursing, um, patient or a person, environment, and health. So according to her, basic to philosophy of nursing are the following. So number one, reverence for the gift of life so this simply means that as a nurse you have to give respect to one's life okay so paano mo ba gagawin yun so once you are a nurse na nag duty na kayo sa hospital whether you are um, assigned in a public especially if you're assigned in the government hospital so usually doon pwede nyo maging patient ang mga pulube ang sobrang mahihirap talaga so you have to treat them of course fairly dapat fair yung treatment nyo sa kanila hindi lang porque ay um, mahirap naman yan sigaw sigawan na lang natin which is uh, the sad truth na makikita natin usually sa government hospital so of course um, dapat baguhin natin yan Okay, so another example for that, um, I remember one of my students before, she approaches me and she talked to me, sabi niya, Ma'am, um, pwede po bang mag-ask po sa inyo ng advice? Sabi ko, yes, go ahead. So, regarding what? Um, I have a friend, sabi niya, um, she is pregnant, tapos <clears throat> nag-aaral pa lang po kami, so nasa second year pa lang. Um, Gusto niya po kasi na ipa-abort yung baby niya. So, what will be your reaction, di ba, as a nurse kapag kayo ay nurse na? Of course, this is actually a common issue na, ma na makakasalubong nyo rin ito. Maka one of your friend will ask you the, the same question or the same advice. Okay, so, gagawin mo ba yun? Ituturo mo ba yung mali? Of course, hindi. Kasi ang pinag-aaralan natin, hindi naman natin pinag-aaralan yung mga medication, how to abort. Pinag-aaralan natin, of course, to preserve life, to save life. Okay? To save lives. And then, number two, of course, you have to respect for the dignity and worth. So, paano ba yan? <clears throat> you have to um, provide privacy or to have, you have to maintain confidentiality of the patient and then autonomy ano yung autonomy of course you have to give the patient a freedom of choice you have to respect the patient the patient's decision or the um, family's decision about the treatment of the patient and individuality of each human being so ibig sabihin is you have to, as a nurse, you have to identify the needs of your client and it should be individualized. You have to, you have to remember that each of us, each of human being is unique. Okay, so may kanya-kanya tayong needs. The need of your patient number one might, might not be the same to the need of your patient number two. So you have to remember that. And according to her, rationality for nursing is the reason she has come into being is that you have to remember that is that there is a patient who needs for help okay so kaya ka nandyan there is a patient merong patient na kailangan niya yung help mo and you have to realize kung ano yung needs na patient ano yung needs ng patient na kailangan mo um, ibigay sa kanya and nursing has five essential attributes of being a professional person number one is clarity of purpose you have to recognize you have to realize so what is your purpose bakit kayo nandyan bakit kayo nag work as nurse of course meron ka dapat tasks and responsibilities na dapat mong gampanan okay so yung mga responsibilities na yun so dapat ma perform mo siya at ma magawa mo ng maayos kasi yan yung purpose mo kung bakit ka nandyan dahil merong patient na kailangan ka and then you have to be responsible in giving or in providing or in helping the needs of the client to be able to uh, achieve um, 
heal, di ba? Or recovery, para makarecover maka siya. And number two, mastery of skill and knowledge essential for fulfilling the purpose. Of course, hindi mo magagawa ang iyong purpose, ang iyong responsibility as a nurse, if you lack skills and knowledge, so how will you get or paano ka magkaroon ng knowledge and skills is of course through pa proper education. That's why nag-aaral kayo for 4 years para ma-develop ang inyong skills, knowledge, and of course, attitude. Di ba? Kahit wala dyan, kasama yung attitude. Okay. Uh, mastery of skill and knowledge. Ano pa? True training. Okay. So, mag-training kayo. For example, um, um, bagong nurse ka, uh, gusto mo sa OR, so dapat mag-undergo ka rin ng training for OR nurses or operating room nurses. And number three, iba ability to establish and sustain purposeful working relationship with others for both professional and non-professional individuals. So, hindi lang dapat maganda yung um, communication skills mo. Okay, yung interpersonal relationship mo with the professionals. Sino ba yung mga professionals? Of course, these are your co-nurses, okay? The doctors, the technicians, okay? The med tech, and etc. The non-professionals, who are they? Sometimes, it could be the patient or the patient's caregiver or... <clears throat> Uh, in other words, natin na tinatawag na nani or kasambahay na siyang nagbabantay with the patient. So, hindi porkit kasambahay lang yan, eh, pangit na yung treatment mo. Okay? And um, number four, as a nurse, you have to uh, show interest in advancing knowledge in the area of your interest. Ano ba yung interest mo? And in creating new knowledge. So, paano yan? So, kahit nurse ka na, like what I did, paulit-ulit kong sinasabi, yung naging nurse ako, I was not satisfied being a nurse. Um, just um, providing care with the client. So, dapat, you want, you, you have to gain more knowledge. Ano ba yung interest mo? Like sa akin, gusto ko maging academician. So, I have to develop myself. No, I have to equip myself with knowledge and skills on how to teach through studying. So, nag-aral ako ng master's degree. Or ikaw naman, gusto mo maging nurse anesthetist. Wow. So, you have to undergo training on on being a nurse and esthetist, kung ano pa yung mga available dyan. So, do not be satisfied na nurse ka, o nga, nurse ka, but then, add more knowledge. Okay, baka maging serious ka pa someday, di ba? Okay. And then, number four, dedication to furthering the goal of humankind, then supporting self-aggrandizement. So, what does it mean? Okay. As a nurse, you are there, not to boast yourself. Baka sabihin mo, mm, ako yung nurse. Ako yung mas nakakaalam. Ako yung mas tama sa iyo pasyente. Ako, mas alam ko yung treatment para sa iyo. So, hindi para, hindi ganun. Hindi ganun why you are there. You have to understand and you have to respect the patient. So, dapat alam mo rin na hindi ka lang din nandyan para, ay, nag-aral lang po ako ng nursing, kumukuha lang po ako ng experience here. Kasi someday or next year, I'll be um, applying work to USA or saan man sa Europe to have more um, money, di ba? So, hindi kasi yan ang purpose mo, di ba? Um, before pa, sinabi ko na sa inyo why you are here. It is a calling, no? It is a calling. So, if it's a calling, of course, merong ano yan, hindi lang yung money ang tinati... Uh, tinitingnan natin, di ba? Should be uh, humanity. Okay. So, hindi human money. Okay. So, humanity, of course. And then, on the person. According to her, a person has four explicit assumptions in relation to human nature. So, number one, each human being is endowed with the unique potential to develop within self 
or may resources siya that enable them to maintain and sustain himself. So, it is very self-explanatory naman. So, lahat naman tayo, um, ginagawa natin yung best natin para ma-achieve natin yung optimum health. Okay? Tapos, may mga resources naman tayo within ourself or from our families. ba? Diba? And number two, the human being basically strives toward self-direction and relative independence and desires not only to make best use of his capab capabilities and potentialities, but to fulfill his responsibilities. So, alam natin yan why you are there. Not just because you want to show that you are capable of doing this. Yung person na yun, alam mo kung bakit siya nandyan. Or alam mo kung bakit gusto niyang gumaling because meron pa siyang mga responsibilities. ba? Diba? Like for example, um, tatay yan. Okay, pag tatay yan, may mga responsibilities pa siya to, um, to support his kids. That's why, um, meron siyang self-direction na yung self-direction niya towards a recovery. So, dapat gumaling siya kung may illness man siya. Or if it is a student or anak naman yan, meron din siyang responsibilities to her or to his parents na kailangan gumaling ako kasi gusto ko pang makapagtapos ng pag-aaral at gusto ko pang i-provide sa family ko yung life na they deserve. So, yun yung mga responsibilities. And then, self-awareness and self-acceptance are essential to the individual sense of integrity and self-worth. So, what does it mean? So, yung person must know ano pa yung mga weakness niya? What are the weaknesses and what are the strengths? So, kung ano man yung weakness niya, dapat he or she must be able to accept that. Of course, para pag na-accept niya yung weakness niya, may kasabihan nga tayo na kapag na- na- na overcome mo yung weakness mo, it might become your strength. So, pwedeng maging strength mo yung weakness na yan. So, it is very important para ma-develop yung kanyang sense of integrity and self-worth. And number four, whatever the individual does represent his or her best judgment at the mo moment of his doing. So, ano ba yung ginagawa ni patient? Diba? Umiiyak lang ba si patient? So, meron din siyang part na ginagawa for his recovery. Meron din siyang iniisip na ito yung best para sa akin. Ito yung mas, mas gagaling ako pag ito yung gagawin ko. Diba? Minsan may ganun na pasyente. So, you have to you have to identify or you have to check that at tama pa ba yung ginagawa ni patient? Ah, baka naman need ng patient na um, more ano more knowledge, no? Baka kailangan niya ng health teaching. Okay? Kasi, yun yung paniniwala niya, yun yung judgment niya about herself, about her recovery. Okay? And individuals, itong, itong four na to, ibig lang sabihin yan, that an individual should want to be healthy. So, lahat naman tayo, we want to be healthy. We don't want to be sick. We won't want to be a burden to our family. Uh, we have dreams. Diba? So, we want to be healthy. We want to be comfortable. And of course, we want to be capable of doing our responsibilities. Dapat capable tayo of performing a certain task. Okay? So, when an impended, he strives by his or her, her own efforts to achieve such states. So, her view on health naman, the concept of health is actually... Um, not clearly defined by Widenbach's model. However, the definitions of nursing, patient, and the need for help, and the relationship among these con concepts actually imply health-related concerns in the nurse-patient situation. So, hindi man clear, so makikita pa rin natin na ang gusto niya is healthy yung individual, capable yung individual na mag-perform, comfortable siya. So, ganon. And then, on environment, same with health, within Bach with, does not specifically address the concept of environment. However, she recognized the, the potential effects of the environment. So, meron ding effect yung environment that might be positive or negative na mag-affect uh, mag doon sa patient's health. Okay. 
So it is implied that the environment may produce obstacles resulting in the person experiencing a need for help. So pwedeng, pwedeng ikasama niya yung sa environment din na pwedeng um, uh, mag-lead sa kanya ng illness. Diba? Kaya kailangan niya ng help from the nurse. So let us talk about other major concepts and definitions. So about the patient. So, parang ang person din ito, no? According to Wiedenbach, a patient is any individual who is receiving help of some kind. So, ito yung nagre-receive ng some kind. Pwede, pwede yung nire-receive niya is care. Could be an instruction or advice. Ano ba yan? Health teaching. For example, the patient is diabetic. Alam mong diabetic si patient. Tapos nakikita mo si patient kain ng kain ng ice cream, ng cake, nagre-request ng mga ganoon. So, maybe the patient need um, health teaching. You have to teach the client kung ano ang meron doon. So, what, what, what is happening in her body? Kung bakit hindi niya kailangan ng more sugar? Okay. Of course, yung mga help na yun or need na yun, will be coming from the member of the health profession or from a worker in the field of health, lalo na sa nursing. Okay. Therefore, to be a patient, the, it, the individual does not necessarily have to be sick. So, hindi ibig sabihin porkit patient siya, um, may sakit na siya. It could be someone receiving preventive health care teaching that would qualify as a patient. So, ano ba yun? effective health teaching. So, alimbawa, sa mga may mga obese or medyo overweight. Parang ako yun, di ba? So, overweight client. So, hindi pa siya. Wala pa siyang sakit. Pero nakita mo, overweight siya. So, alam mo na yung being an overweight could lead to some illness later on. Okay. So, pwede ka nang, yung pay, pwede nang maging patient mo yun, get overweight lang siya, yun lang. So, pwede mo na siyang bigyan ng mga preventive measures. So, dapat ayusin mo na yung kanyang uh, diet. Okay, so papasok na yung nutrition, na, nutrition and diet therapy nyo, which, which is, ar aaralin nyo yan uh, later on during your level 2. So, Ako rin yung professor nyo doon, hopefully, ako pa din, no, to teach you about nutrition, nutrition and diet therapy. So, pwede kang magbigay sa kanya ng health teaching. So, ibig sabihin, hindi lang may sakit ang patient. So, even the well, pwede mong maging patient. So, let, let us discuss about the need for help. Kasi ito yung talagang parang in-specify niya that um, a nurse should be able to identify the client's needs. So, ano pa yung mga needs na yun? So, it is, she believed that every individual experiences needs as a normal part of living. So, lahat naman tayo talaga, even you are well, meron tayong mga needs, ba? Mga needs, simply na lang, yung basic needs na lang natin, we have our kailangan natin ng water, kailangan natin ng food to survive. Kasi the food uh, serves as our fuel, di ba? Kung sa sasakyan, hindi tatakbo yung sasakyan mo without the gasoline. So, same with us. Okay. And need is anything the individual may require to maintain or sustain himself comfortably or capably in his situation. So, that is very self-explanatory. So, yung need na to could be... um kailangan niya yung help ni nurse. Diba? Pwedeng ganun. Um, the patient is unable to eat by himself. Hindi niya kaya. So, parang pumapasok na dito yung theory ni Orem. Diba? So, yung partial naman na need ni patient. So, na i-provide mo to help her. Diba? Or si patient um, may nararamdaman. So, ano ba yung baka kailangan mo siyang i-advise na palagi daw masakit ang kanyang ulo. So, baka, ano ba yung underlying symptoms nun? Underlying, ano yung underlying illness sa symptoms na yan na sinasabi niya, I'm having um, headache for many days. Baka may underlying factor. Or baka, hindi lang yung ordinary headache. So, you have to advise the patient na tulungan mo siya na magpa-check up. Okay. 
and it is an attempt to meet the need is made by an intervention of help. So once you realize that the patient has needs or you have identified the needs of your patient, your intervention intervention comes in. So, ano ba yung intervention na dapat mong ibigay? So, it depends kung ano yung na-identify mo na need. Which is, any measure or action that enables the individual to overcome whatever interferes with his ability to function capably in relation to his situation. Okay, that's a typographical error. So, it means situation. So, bakit na doon ang situation niya? Bakit um, unable siya to function? Lagi na lang siyang nakahiga kasi masakit na yung ulo niya or masakit yung kanyang chan. So, ano yung action na gagawin mo? Katulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, um, doon sa headache, eh, observe mo muna, eh, observe mo siya, tingnan mo kung ilang days, sabihin mo sa kanya, intervention mo muna, mag-rest muna, take a, take a deep breath, mag-relax, clear, clear his mind, so mga ganun. So, pwede rin, halimbawa, may pain si patient, so ginagawa na rin ang mga nurse si patient, talagang in pain after surgery. So, meron din silang ginagawang music therapy. Ayan. So, yan yung mga intervention. A need for help, okay, is any measure or action required and desired by the individual and has potential for restoring or extending his ability to meet with the demands implicit in his situation. So, karutong lang yan dito sa sinasabi natin. It is crucial for a nursing profession that a need for help is based on the individual's perception of of his own situation. So, ano pa yung... Um, kasi pag, pag hindi, hindi mo alam yung perception niya ni patient, wala ring value, wala ring mangyayari doon sa iyong intervention. So, dapat alam mo how does your patient perceive his situation. Eh, pag very negative siya, ay, hindi ko na talaga kaya, hindi ko na talaga kaya, um, dapat meron ka pang ibang gawin. Okay. Kasi nga, alam mo na that the patient, iba yung magiging technique mo. Pero if your patient is cooperative, very positive, so mas, ma mas mapapadali ang iyong intervention. So, very crucial yan na kailangan alamin mo uh, ano yung perception ni patient about his situation. If not, then he might not be cooperative with your intervention. So, your evaluation might fail. Okay. Another term is the nurse. Diba? Another concept. So, the nurse is a functioning, na mention na natin kanina, is a functioning human being. So, functioning ka as such, she not only acts, but think and feels as well. So, if hindi lang, actually, this is the sad truth, na no? kasi pagpunta nyo sa area, mapapansin nyo at makikita nyo Ang mga nurses, they are very busy. They are very busy, very task-oriented sila. So, ang dami nilang ginagawa doon sa station, nagsusulat ng charting o kung ano-ano pa. So, you have to realize that, uh, that as a nurse, you are not there just to act. You, you should have to use your critical thinking. Diba? Sinabi ni patient kanina, masakit ang ulo ko. Ilang days na yan. So, you have to use your critical thinking. So, isipin mo, an ano kaya ang cause nito? Ano kaya ang underlying ng symptoms na to? Diba? Ano ang underlying factor? Diba? And feels. So, dapat be sensitive with the patient. Hindi naman yung sensitive ka na, hmm, sensitive ako, iwasan na lang kita. Be sensitive with the needs of the patient. Huwag kang manhid. Diba? Okay. They underlie every action she takes, be it the form of a spoken word, a written communication, a gesture, or a deed of any kind. So, for the nurse, whose action is directed toward achievement of a specific for purpose, thoughts, and feelings, have a dis disciplined role to play. So, kailan coordinated yan. So, meron kang... Meron kang goal as a nurse. Ang goal mo is towards recovery of the patient or optimum health of your patient. Okay. 
Let us talk about the four main elements of clinical nursing according to Wiedenbach. So, I mentioned niya yung philosophy, purpose, practice, and art. So, let us discuss each of these elements. So, number one, yung purpose. The purpose is what the nurse wants to accomplish through what she does. So, ano ba yung gusto mong i-accomplish? Kaya ka nga tinuturuan kumawa ng NCP later on, ang pag-aaralan nyo how to do your nursing care plan. Okay. It's the overall goal toward which is which she is striving and so is constant. So, you are striving um, to help the client. Hindi yung hayaan mo lang si patient. Gusto mo, of course, you will be happy kapag um, naka-recover si patient, uuwi na si patient, di ba ang saya sa pakiramdam no, na no, naka-recover na siya. At huwag mong sasabihin na um, well, uh, come back again, di ba? Ano ba yun? Yung usual na sinasabi nyo, hope to see you again, so wag naman ganun. Okay? Ayaw mo na siyang makita ulit kasi if you say hope to see you ag hope to see you again, ibig sabihin magkakasakit siya ulit, di ba? So that's bad naman. It is her reason for being and for doing. It is to the why of clinical nursing and transcends the immediate intent of her assignment or task by specifically directing her activities towards the good of her patient. So, na-mention ko na yan para sa ikabubuti ni patient, yung purpose mo. And the philosophy, the philosophy is an attitude toward life and reality that evolves from each nurse's belief and code of conduct. So, very important talaga tong code of conduct. That's why lahat po kayo gusto ko ma-develop yung inyong attitude. Kasi, pag wala kang attitude, pangit ang maibibigay mong care. Kailangan, um, sabi nga nila, um, tinatanggal na nila yung portion ng attitude sa ibang, ano, di ba? Um, it is very important pa rin yung attitude kasi useless if you have the skills and the knowledge but without the attitude to carry out that skills and knowledge you learn, wala rin kasi. So, di ba? Kung hindi mo, wala kang puso for your patient. So, alam naman natin, nursing. Ano ba ang nursing? To give care. E kung wala kang puso, what will happen? Uh, motivates the nurse to act. Ito yung guide niya. Guides her thinking about what she is to do. And influences her decision. So, yun ang magiging ano mo, yung philosophy mo. Yun ang iyong influence in, in making decision. Ano ba yung mga decision na ginagawa mo? Of course, for the good of your patient. It stems from both her culture and subculture and is integral part of her. It is personal in character, unique to each nurse, and expressed in her way of nursing. So, iba-iba tayo ng philosophy. But make sure na yung philosophy mo is founded naman doon sa ating mga theories. The philosophy underlines purpose and her purpose reflects philosophy. Okay? So, philosophy underlines purpose and her purpose reflects philosophy. So, that is philosophy according to within bound. Now, on practice. Practice in an, is an overt action directed by disciplined thoughts and feelings toward meeting the patient's need for help constitutes the practice of clinical nursing. So, what does it mean? Ito yung evident. Ito yung ginagawa mo. Diba? Ito yung ginagawa mo for the patient. Ito yung actual na piniperform mo for the patient para sa kanyang ikagagaling for his or her recovery. It is goal-oriented, deliberately carried out, and patient-centered. So, hindi po siya task-oriented or task-centered. So, it is patient-centered. So, practice, you can do your practice or you can apply your practice if you have enough knowledge. So, ito yung three aspects, no? Three aspects that are necessary for a pre for effective practice. You should have the knowledge, the good judgment, and the skills. Kasi kapag kulang ang iyong knowledge, na kailan mo ba nakukuha ang knowledge? Is of course, pati ang judgment. Nade-develop lahat yan actually during your college life. College life nyo as a nurse. So, nade-develop yung tatlong yan. So, we teach you about theory, 
And then later on, you will have your skills laboratory. It will develop kayo doon sa skills lab. And later on, in your um in the area to have your related learning experiences. So, nadidevelop yung mga yan para maging effective yung inyong practice later on. And it has three components, no? Directly related to patient's care. Such as the identification, ministration, and validation. So, we will discuss these three um, components further in the next slides. Coordination of resources is in directly related to patient care. Okay. So, mga resources, kailangan eh, that is coordinated. Ano ba yung mga resources na pinag-uusapan natin dyan? Okay. Uh, Madediscuss din yan in the next slides. Okay. So, knowledge. So, when we say knowledge, it encompasses all that has been perceived and grasped by the human mind. Its scope and range are infinite. So, Unending yung knowledge, di ba? So, sabi nga nila, walang katapusan yung learning natin. Even, um, napakagaling mo na, nursing director ka na, or naging president ka na ng board of nursing, still, you are uh, digging for more knowledge. Kasi hindi yan, hindi natatapos yan. It is infinite. Bakit? Nag-change yung mundo natin, just like what happened recently, currently, the present, di ba? What's happening? There is a COVID-19. So, yung COVID-19 na yan, wala yan before. So, ngayon, pinag-aaralan din ulit natin yan. So, kung ano yung uh, proper care na ating ibibigay for the COVID patient, especially yung COVID patient, paano natin sila ititreat na nakakatakot lumapit sa kanila kasi pwede kang mahawa. And then, the patient, you have to consider na kapag nag-provide ka ng um, care for the patient, it should be holistic. So, paano mo maibigay yung holistic? Baka naman puro physical ka na lang dahil takot na takot kang makipag-usap kay patient. Hindi mo na na-consider yung other aspect of an individual or of a person. So, knowledge may be acquired. So, when acquired, it has potentiality for use in directing, teaching, coordinating, and planning care of the patient but is not sufficient to meet his need for help. So, Hindi lang kasi enough yung knowledge na yun. So, kailangan mo rin, meron ka pang um, skills, di ba? Yan. So, acquired. Saan mo ba nakukuha yung knowledge? Of course, during your, habang nag-aaral ka, so nakukuha mo yung mga knowledge, how to how to care for the patient, just not like what we are doing now. Inaral natin yung mga different theories, di ba? May mga sinasabi sila, may mga kanya-kanya silang philosophy, may kanya-kanya silang concepts, meron silang kanya-kanyang way of caring a patient. So, later on, mamimili na lang kayo kung sino yung gusto nyong i-apply in your practice. Such knowledge must be supplemented by opportunity for the nurse to function in a nurse patient relationship with responsibility to exercise judgment and to implement skills for the benefits of the patient. Okay. So, knowledge could be factual, speculative, and practical. So, factual knowledge is something that may be accepted. Sorry. So, factual knowledge is something that may be accepted as existing or as being true. So, ano ba yung mga example ng factual knowledge? Actually, your factual knowledge refers to the essential facts, no? Like terminology, details, or elements. Na matutunan nyo, just like, for example, that itong um, pag napunta na kayo ng second sem, so may mga terms na kayo matutunan, the medical terms. Okay? Then, speculative knowledge encompasses the theories, the general principles offered to explain phenomena, beliefs, or concepts. And the context of such a subject areas as the natural sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities. So, ito nga yung mga nakukuha natin sa theories, yung mga inaaral nyo sa mga iba pang subject. And then, the practical knowledge is knowing how to apply the factual or speculative knowledge to the situation at hand. So, yung mga natutunan nyo, yung mga theory na natutunan nyo, yung mga terms na yun, 
i-apply nyo na into actual. So, ito na. Pag nasa area na kayo, yung lahat ng mga terms, lahat ng series na natutunan nyo, ipiperform nyo na siya into actual setting. So, that's the practical. And another concept here is the judgment. So, judgment means or represents the nurse potentiality for making sound decision. So, kailan ba kinakailangan na mag-decide ka? So, halimbawa, may nag, um, merong nag-exist or merong nag-arise na problem in the, in the clinical area. So, halimbawa, no, yung baby is for, or yung, yung bata is for surgery. Ngayon, napakakulit tong bata, iyak siya ng iyak, iyak talaga ng iyak, hingi siya ng food dahil nagugutom na siya. Ialam mo naman na um, NPO ang bata, pero hindi talaga siya tumitigil sa pag-iyak, hindi mapatahan ng mami o kahit sino man, hindi talaga siya tumigil. Tapos, ano yung magiging decision mo dito, di ba? You need to have a wise decision. So, dapat, saan man gagaling yung iyong decisions so, is, of course, um, it is rooted from what you learn, okay? From your knowledge na nag nyo from the school. Or, hindi lang from the school is, of course, based on your experience, okay? It grows out of a cognitive process which involves weighing facts, for both general and particular against personal values derived from ideals, principles, and convictions. So, you have to weigh facts. Ito ba yung tama? Ano ba yung mas best na gagawin ko for the patient? Hindi na talaga siya mapatigil at na-disturb na lahat-lahat. Ano ang pwede mong gawin? Okay, it involves differentiating facts from assumptions and relating them to cause and effect. So, Ano ba yung cause? Ano possible na mangyari? Malimbawa, pinipilit um, ang cause ng pag-iyak ng bata ay nagugutom talaga siya dahil naka-NPO siya dahil the next day, meron siyang surgery. So, kapag binigay mo yung food, what is the effect to the patient? Okay. Kailangan dyan, tapos nang uulit si mami, hindi, bakit ba ganyan? Bakit kailangan ganyan? Kunti lang naman para matigil lang. So, dito napapasok yung iyong um, strategy, yung decision making mo, tapos ipaliwanag mo kay patient. So, ano ba ang mangyayari? Baka naman ikaw mismo si nurse, NPO yung patient, ah, umiiyak siya, pakainin ko na lang. Hindi mo alam bakit siya naka-NPO. So, dapat ikaw mismo as a nurse, you know, what is the reason behind? What would be the effect if I let the client eat before the surgery? Ikonti lang naman. So, you have to know that. Bakit nga ba? Bakit nga ba hindi pwedeng kumain ang patient before surgery? Kasi, of course, kapag kumain siya, lalo na for general anesthesia, at actually, it happens to us. No, I was eh, an often nurse before. And then, may bata na nag-undergo ng surgery. Tapos, although nabilinan siya na NPO, yung mami pala, ang, ang mali naman ni nurse, hindi niya in-inform yung mami kung ano yung reason, bakit hindi pwedeng mag -in bakit hindi pwedeng kumain ang patient. So, what happened? Yung mami, pinakain yung pasyente kasi naawa siya dun sa baby. So, hindi niya alam, nagulat na lang kami during the surgery, nagkaroon ng arrest yung bata. Um, bakit siya nagkaroon ng arrest? Yung food na kinain niya, uh, yung food na kinain niya, syempre, nag-general surgery siya, parang, nag, parang bumalik siya. So, bumalik siya pataas. So, nagkaroon patuloy ngayon ng problem. Diba? So, nagkaroon ng problem doon sa pwede kasi magkaroon ng aspiration or may may other pang problem na pwedeng mangyari doon sa pasyente na kailangan i-tubuhin yung pasyente. Um, hindi mo basta-basta magagawa kasi busog yung pasyente that, that might pwedeng bumalik na sa taas at pwedeng pumunta doon sa lungs yung kinain ng patient. Okay, so it should be clear to the patient kung bakit kailangan gawin yun. Okay. So, judgment is personal in character. It will be exercised by the nurse according to how clearly she envisions the purpose to be served, how available relevant knowledge is to her at the time, and how she reacts 
to prevailing circumstances such as time, setting, and individuals. The broader the, the nurse's knowledge, the more available it is to her, and the greater her clarity of purpose, the firmer will be the foundation on which her decision rests. Katulad lang noon, hindi mo, kung may knowledge ka talaga as a nurse, kung bakit hindi pwedeng kumain si patient, kung inintindi mo during your um, kung ano yung mga cause na possible na mangyari, kung ano yung mga uh, effect na possible na mangyari kapag busog si patient before the surgery, um, na-explain mo yan. Alam mo yan dapat, hindi yung sige pakainin na lang natin ng konti. So, to ha sabi nga natin, knowledge is power. Of course, if you have enough knowledge, tama ang iyong magiging decision. But if you lack knowledge, surely, mali-mali ang iyong maging decision. So, skills. So, skills represents the nurse potentiality for achieving desired results. Skills comprise numerous and varied acts characterized by harmony of movement, expression, and intent, by precision, and by adjurity use of self. These acts are always carried out with deliberation to achieve a specific purpose and are not goals in themselves. Ano ibig sabihin nito? The skills. To simplify, um, aaralin, pag-aaralan nyo lahat ng procedures. Okay, ito na nga, may classification tayo, no? So, there are two classification of skills. Number one is the procedural and communication. In procedural, there these are the potentialities for implementing procedures that the nurse may need to initiate and carry out in order to identify and meet her patient's need for help. So, itong mga procedures na to, ituturo to sa inyo. Pagdating nyo ng level, um, actually by next SEM, you, uh, meron kayong um, different skills on how to perform even simply as hand washing meron kayong procedure for that para tama talaga na lahat ng lahat ng fingers mo ay lahat ay nahugasan mo ilan ilan dapat ang minutes ang proper way of hand washing not only hand washing but of course to do the physical assessment to assess the patient so napakaraming procedure na aaralin niyo communication our cap our capacities for expression of thoughts and feelings that the nurse desires to convey to the patient and to others associated with this care so you have to be you have a, to have a therapeutic communication skills therapeutic communication skills dapat dapat maganda ang inyong communication skills to the patient para magkaintindihan kayo e paano kung ikaw si nurse hindi na develop ang inyong communication skills that's why um dito pa lang as early as now um, pinadidevelop ko na yung mga communication skills nyo. That's why I let you do the reporting para um, hindi na kayo maging mahiyain. Tapos during your um, RLE sa skills laboratory, dapat isa-isa kayong magsalita how to perform a certain skill a certain skills so to develop your communication skills, yung therapeutic communication skills with the patient. Okay? Um, it could be both verbal and non-verbal expression may be used singly or to deliver a message or to elicit a particular response. So, the components of practice. So, yung practice directly related to patient's care. So, merong components yung practice. The identification, ministration, validation, and actually, in-include na natin dito yung coordination of resources, which was uh, mentioned earlier. So, in identification, it involves individualization of the patient, his experiences, and recognition of the patient's perception of his condition. So, you have to, um, you know nga, as I mentioned earlier, in the every or each individual is unique. So, may kanya-kanya tayo. May kanya-kanya tayong experiences. May kanya-kanya tayong perception on our condition. Okay? May kanya-kanya tayong needs. So, it should be individualized. You have to identify that. Activities and identification are directed toward asserting the following. Whether the patient has a need, may need ba si patient? Ano ba yung, may problema ba? Ano ba yung um, kailangan ni patient? 
whether he recognizes that he has a need. So, alam ba ni patient na may need siya? O baka mamaya, you provide a certain need. Or, hindi, hindi ko naman kailangan yan. Ay, nakakalakad naman ako. Ay, kaya ko namang maglakad mag-isa. So, it is important na pag-usapan nyo with the patient na um, medyo hirap pa po kayong maglakad. Baka po matumba kayo. So, dapat eh, makipag-away si patient. Hindi, malakas ako. You have to explain to the patient na sa isip nyo lang po yung malakas kayo, baka po kayo matumba at magkaroon pa po kayo ng fracture which may lead to a more complicated problem. So, what is interfering with his ability to meet his needs? So, ano ba yung problema? Ano pa ang cause kung bakit hindi ma-meet yung need niya? So, kailangan ma-identify mo yun, of course, para makapag-intervene ka. Whether the need represents a need for help or the need that the patient is unable to meet him, to meet himself. Okay. So, kailangan ba ang iyong help? So, na-identify mo na. Kailangan ba? So, parang similar din siya halos doon kay, uh, kay OREM, di ba? Kay OREM na theory, the self-care. And another concept here is ministration. So, it is providing the needed help. So, ibig sabihin ito yung assistance, providing assistance to the patient. Kasi na-recognize mo na yung need niya. It requires the identification of the need for help. So, of course, bago ka makapag-provide ng help, you have to identify the need of the client. You have to select measures. Ano ba yung um, helping measures na pwede mong that are appropriate to the need of the client and the acceptability of the help to the patient. So, a-accept mo niya. Um, alam ba ni patient na may need siya? Sometimes kasi ano pa ba yung ibang need na pwede natin na minsan hindi mo alam. Sometimes it, it is a psychological need. Diba? Parang depression patient. Parang alam mo na kailangan niya ng professional help. So, dapat ma-recognize ma siya. Yan yung pinakamahirap. Yung psychological. Kasi sometimes, in denial talaga yung patient. Validation. So, it is the evidence that the patient's functionality or functional ability was restored as a result of the help given. So, if you look at our nursing process, yung validation, parang same with siya, same din siya with your evaluation. So, you have to check now if, the ba, first, the identification of the needs, the administration of help or providing assistance and then validation. So, you have to you have to validate kung yung help ba na binigay mo or your intervention was effective. And the coordination of resources. So, while striving for unity and continuity, the nurse coordinates all patient services to ensure that care will not be fragmented. So, ano ba yung coordination of resources? This time, pumapasok pa na. Kasi, um, Yung caring of the patient kasi once na nasa hospital, it's a teamwork. It's a teamwork. Hindi lang not only you na nurse ang magbibigay ng care for the patient, as well as, of course, your nursing aides. Um, pwede silang tumulong doon sa needs of the patient, lalo na yung um, mga basic needs, simpleng, pagka, simpleng pagkain, pagkumain siya, hindi kaya, or going to the bathroom. Pwede nang gawin ng nursing aides yan. And then, what else? Ano pa ba? Um, the um, pwede mo kasi, halimbawa, may problem doon sa diet, kaya nakipag-coordinate din tayo sa dietitian, nakipag-coordinate din tayo with the laboratory, kung ano yung results or ano yung mga laboratory na dapat gawin with the patient. So, it's it's a teamwork. So, it's, you have to, kaya kailangan din yung therapeutic skills, uh, therapeutic communication skills nyo or your communication skills ay dapat maganda kasi you are coordinating with other uh, member of the health team. Okay. Reporting, consulting, and conferring are functional elements of coordination. So, in reporting, so, reporting is the act of presenting information in written or oral form and is important in keeping others informed not only about the patient's health and social history, but also about the current condition, reaction, progress, care plan, care and plan of care. So, 
Ang reporting mo, saan ba natin makikita yan? Usually, nandoon yan sa patient's chart. So, nandun lahat yung kanya mga medication records, mga laboratories, your nurse, nurse's notes, the vital, the vital science notes, yan, nandun lahat, intake and output. So, makikita natin yan. So, dapat din, alam nyo how to properly record data. Conferring. Conferring is the act of exchanging and comparing ideas. It is most often initiated to review the patient's response to the care he has so far received and to plan his future care. So, titingnan natin kung tama ba to exchanging of ideas. So, pwedeng with the nurse and the physician. Okay. Consulting the act of seeking information or asking advice that may help the nurse to broaden her knowledge before deciding on a course of action. So, pwede kayong mag-usap with your head nurse. Doon ito po yung situation ni patient. Ano po ba yung best solution? Ano po yung best na gagawin ko for the patient? Um, ganito po si patient. Meron din kaming na-encounter before, no? Napakahirap. Merong patient doon na... Ito rin, ito rin yung mga decision making kailangan mo eh, as a nurse na kailangan maganda ang iyong decision making maganda ang iyong communication skills kasi based on my experience merong patient na napakasuplado or na, napakasuplado niya so kailangan i-monitor yung kanyang vital signs every hour so bakit kailangan i-monitor yung kanyang vital signs every hour kasi may problema na kailangan Halimbawa, lalo na pag after surgery. So, kailangan makita natin kung may signs of uh, complication ba through uh, monitoring the vital signs. But the problem is, the patient is not cooperative. Even the even the relatives, ayaw nila nakakatuka doon. So, yung mga sudyante ko, ma'am, takot na takot kami, ma'am, kasi magagalit po sila, ayaw po nilang pa-disturb. So, again, you have to explain. You need to have a good communication skills and make sure na yung gagawin mo pagpasok mo sa, sa room ng pasyente ay tatapusin mo lahat. Hindi yung punta ka doon, tapos balik ka naman ulit. Kasi nga, of course, nagagalit sila kasi nadidisturb. Yung patient na nga, hindi na nga siya makatulog. At eh, that time pa lang, um, doon pa lang siya mag-start matulog. Eh, kumakatuka na naman, imbis makatulog si patient. Na, according to them, or based on the on their judgment of the patient and the relatives, pag nakatulog si patient, baka mapabilis ang kanyang recovery. Eh, andyan ka, disturbo ka para sa kanila. So, you have to, um, Pwede mo i-consult yan with a physician kung ano yung best na gawin or with your supervisor or with your head nurse. Okay. So, another concept, major concept na pinag-uusapan dito kay Widen Bach is the art. Sabi niya, nursing is an art. So, as an art, it is an application of knowledge and skills to bring about desired result. Art is individualized action. So, paano ba yun? Even communication is an art. ba diba? Parang the way, katulad yung patient na, na ginawa ko example sa inyo, a uh, very um, ano siya, very sensitive, strict. So, ano yung art mo doon? Ano yung individualized action mo na gagawin doon? So, as a nurse, ano yung best way na para makommunicate mo, makuha mo yung attention ni patient and the relatives, makuha mo yung loob niya. So, tapos, kailangan kailangan, ano ka rin, aaralin mo lahat ng gagawin mo, lahat ng medication, para pag puma, kasi alam mo, strict siya eh, pagpasok mo, alam mo, ay good morning po, magbibigay lang po ako ng medication, ito pong medication na ito, is for pain po, yan, kailangan i-explain mo lahat, hindi lang yung pagpasok mo, siguro kaya sila naiinis, kasi pagpasok mo, good morning po, nibigay lang po ng gamot, without further explanation, kung ano yung gamot na binigay mo, di ba? So, nursing art is carried out by the nurse in a one-to-one -one relationship with the patient and constitutes the nurse's conscious responses to specifics in the patient's immediate situation. So, ano yung current situation of the client? So, ano nga ba yung need ni patient? So, dito papasok yung art mo. Yung art in order to provide the, or in order to achieve the need of the client. So, the art of clinical nursing is directed toward achievement of the four main goals. 
as follows. Number one, understanding of the patient and his condition, situation, and needs. It is very important that you understand your patient. You understand his situation. Ay, napakasuplado ni patient. Ay, ayoko na sa kanya. Sensitive din ako. Ay, bahala siya. Hindi ko na siya bibigyan ng care. Bahala siya kung ayaw niyo minum ng gamot. You have to understand na not only uh, physically um, yung problem ni patient, in, not only physically disturbed si patient or physically impaired si patient, of course, emotionally, psychologically, socially, it is affected. So, you have to realize that. Enhance enhancement of the patient's capability. So, parang kay Orem din, ano? So, have to develop the patient. Tuturuan mo siya to be able uh, to become capable of doing a certain task or um, a simple uh, activity of daily living. Improvement of his condition or situation with the framework of the medical plan for his care. So, paano ba ma-improve yung kanyang condition? I-carry out mo yung um, medical plan. So, hindi lang kasi nursing care plan. Mayroon din syempre medical plan ng ating mga doctors. Okay, prevention of the recurrence of his problem. Okay, kailangan ma-prevent mo. So, how you will you do that? Or development of a new one which may cause a, 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 any disability or distress. Okay, so prevention of recurrence. So, dapat pagpa-uwi na si patient, nagkaroon siya ng Ano man yung naging problem niya, halimbawa, nag-undergo sa'yo ng surgery, para hindi na bumalik si patient, ituro mo yung proper way of kailan yung follow-up niya, um, proper wound care. So, ituturo mo yung wound care para hindi magkaroon ng more problem pa doon. Kasi pag nagkaroon ng infection doon, so babalik ulit si patient, may panibagong problem kasi nagka-infection yung kanyang surgical incision, yung wound niya. So, it is very important yung wound care na ituturo nyo. Um, tuturoan din kayo niyan in your um, skills laboratory. So, meron din how to do wound care. So, nursing art involves three initial operations such as the following, no? Stimulus, preconception, interpretation. And again, we will discuss each of these in the, the next slides. The nurse reacts on the basis of those operations. Ito mga operations na to. Her actions may be rational or reactionary or deliberative. So, ano ibig sabihin niya? So, stimulus. It means that the helping process is triggered by the stimulus, which is the patient's presenting behavior. So, ito yung stimulus. Ano ba yung behavior ni patient? Ano ba yung nakita mo sa patient? Um, in pain siya, nakikita mo yung ano niya sa pain scale mo, yung reaction niya, uh, very irritable siya, um, um, hindi mo siya makausap, sup nagsusuplado siya. So, yun yung stimulus na makikita mo na may need doon sa patient. Meron siyang pain. Okay. Preconception. It is an expectation of what the patient may be like. Okay. Expectation. Preconception nga eh. Dahil may be like. Kung halimbawa, um, hindi mo na ibigay yung kanyang um, or hindi mo na perform yung hindi mo na ibigay yung health teaching na kailangan niya doon sa wound care niya. What will happen? So, possible magkaroon ng infection. So, kung, kung naibigay mo naman, ang expectation mo is magiging fast yung kanyang wound healing. This is based on knowledge gained from the great variety of sources, including the patient's chart, reports from other nurses, doctors, or family members. What the nurse has read or heard of patients in similar condition, her own experiences with patients in similar condition, and finally, the recollection of previous contacts with the patient. So, ito yung mga baseline mo, yung kanyang chart, yung report niya, na ito yung pwedeng mangyari sa kanya. So, alam mo, based doon sa chart niya, the patient has undergo, um, uh, three days ago, the patient underwent surgery. So, possible, what will happen to the patient? Ano ang mga possible complications? Pwedeng magkaroon ng bleeding, pwedeng magkaroon ng infection. Kasi based doon sa nabasa mo. So, dito ngayon, papasok ang iyong, the patient has need, di ba? Has need, ano ba ang need na may maintain, ma, um, ma, ma, 
prevent yung further complications so dapat may perform mo or may provide mo yung need ng patient ano yung need niya so dapat iingatan mo na hindi magkaroon ng infection sa wound iingatan mo na hindi magkaroon ng bleeding so yun yun interpretation is the comparison of perception with expectation or hope this is what would happen so perception is an interpretation of the stimulus and may be um, misinterpret the patient's behavior so not all the time naman yung interpretation mo doon sa patient's behavior or doon sa patient's action itama eh, ang iyong interpretation or doon sa mga nabasa mo so that's why you need to validate that rational action kasi nga nakabase nga doon yung yung ano ni nurse de ba na yung action ni nurse it could be rational action it is an overt act taken in response solely or mainly to the doer's immediate perception of another's action could be verbal or non-verbal or in any situation so rational ano ba yung rational ito yung ideal na action na dapat mong gampanan or gawin doon sa patient Uh, example nga natin, in pain si patient. So, nasa ano pa naman siya, hospital pa siya. Um, Ma'am, pain reliever. Ang pain reliever kasi, um, hindi, agad, hindi yan nursing action. It's a medical action. So, it requires a doctor's order. So, ano yung pwede mong nursing action dyan? Rational action kapag may pain si patient. You can teach the client to do deep breathing exercises. Or, Um, you can provide a music therapy to the patient. Yeah. Reactionary action. So, in contrast with rational action, is an overt act taken spontaneously in response to strong feelings the doer experiences when he compares his perception of another's behavior or situation with his expectation or hope about that behavior. So, itong reactionary um, action, Um, hindi siya not all the time ay ano siya, ideal action of the nurse. Possible kasi itong pwedeng negative, pwedeng positive yung reactionary action mo. Which is hindi rin tama. Dapat rational lagi ang iyong action. Deliberative action. In contrast with both rational action and reactionary action, a deliberative action is an overt act which is an interaction. directed toward fulfillment of an explicit purpose and carried out with judgment and understanding of how the other means the behavior which he is manifesting either verbally or non-verbally. So, i-deliberate mo yan. i we weigh mo siya. Ano ba yung cause? Ano ba yung effect? Ano ba yung bakit ganun? Bakit ganun ang behavior ni patient? So, I-way mo muna yon bago ka mag-act. So, that is deliberative action. So, i-way mo muna para makapag-act ka ng marami. Ay, marami ng mabuti or ng maayos. Unlike doon sa um, yung isa kanina, reactionary action, basta na lang, nag-act na lang, nagalit sa'yo si pasyente, nagalit ka rin. Di ba? Pwedeng positive. Pwede kasing maging positive yung action mo, pwedeng maging negative. Pagdating dito sa deliberative action, of course, tinitimbang mo what is the proper way to act what is ideal based on your knowledge and your skills so the framework of nursing according to within back uh, uh, it limits supports and research provide a broad framework in which the clinical nursing functions ito yung framework niya limits or boundaries and a professional service give the individual guidelines to follow in practicing the profession. The profession's code sets professional limits. Legal limits are those found in state laws and licensing requirements. The hospital, agency, or individual, the nurse works for sets local limits. And the nurse herself sets personal limits. So, ito yung kanyang framework. Supportive facilities for the practicing nurse or nursing administration, nursing education, and nursing organization. So, I don't need to further discuss this one kasi that is very self-explanatory naman. Ito yung sinundan niya as framework of her theory. So, acceptability of her theory by the nursing community. So, paano in-accept? 
So, in practice, uh, it is more acceptable today. So, mas tinatanggap daw ito ngayon na you have to identify the needs of the patient done during 1950s and 1960s. In the 1980s, the healthcare industry provided a supposedly unique concept of family-centered care, which Wiedenbach addressed some 20 years ago. So, mas acceptable siya. Acceptability or acceptance by the nursing community or in education. So, Wittenbach proposed that nursing education serves to practice in four major ways. Number one, it is responsible for the preparation of future practitioners of nursing. It arranges for nursing students to gain experience in clinical areas of hospitals or the homes of their patients. So, yun kasi ang naging guide natin, no? Yung theory niya. So, paano siya ginamit sa education? It rep its representative may function in the clinical area and may work closely with the staff. It offers educational opportunities to the nurse in the future, special or advanced study. Okay? For special or advanced study. So, it's education. So, acceptance by the nursing community in research. So, before the development of Fiedenbach's model, nursing research focused more on the medical model than on nursing model. So, diba, dati talagang medical model lang yung sinusunod, wala tayong sariling intervention. So, kung wala, pagka, so pag, wala na si, pag wala na yung doktor, yun ang gagawin mo, iyak na nang iyak si patient. Halimbawa, eh, yung, ora, eh, yung med, a pain medication niya is for every 8 hours. Eh, wala pa, every 8 hours, eh, naka 4 hours pa lang siya after the uh, pain reliever na binigay mo. Iyak na naman siya ng iyak kasi in pain na naman siya. So, maghihintay ka pa ng 4 hours na iyak ng iyak si patient. So, dapat meron kang gagawin, di ba? Eh, hindi lang nakafocus doon sa um, intervention, sa medical intervention. So, as a nurse, ano nga ba para malesen mo yung pain? Of course, is by um, uh, music therapy, deep breathing exercises, yun yun, yung pwede mong gawin. Okay, in her model, focus of nursing research is to be related to the patient's response to the healthcare experience. So, that actually ends my presentation, but before we will end, end um, I want you to watch again this presentation on how um, how within box theory will be applied in the setting. So again, enjoy watching. Hi, I'm Ravina. I will present to you today Dal Bob. He is a nursing student and he has an assignment about Mrs. Wiedenbach. He does not understand her theories. Suddenly something unexpected happened. Let's see. Oh my god. I have my presentation next week and I can't understand my assigned nurse theory dot I can't even pronounce her name. What are you going to do, Bob? I am Mrs. Wiedenbach. I am your assigned nurse theorist. I came back to life to help you with your assignment. My theory is called the The Helping Art of Clinical Nursing. Oh, thank God. I can't understand a word of your theory and I was hoping that you can help me. First, what is this theory is talking about in general? In my theory, the nurse should determine the patient's need for help to cope with situations which affect his or her health through nurse's observation of the patient's symptoms and behavior and identifying their meaning and their cause. After that, the nurse can determine if the patient can resolve his discomfort by himself or he will need another help from another healthcare professional. I don't get it. Okay. Suppose you have a headache after a long day of work. What is your routine next step to do? I don't know. A pain pill will most likely resolve the issue, Bob. Right? Then, what if the same headache happens to you on a regular basis and also accompanied by a chronic hypertension? I don't know. Thankfully, I am already dead and I can't kill myself. Bob, in this case you should use your critical thinking to think about the cause of the headache which might be something more severe. In the first scenario, the patient can help himself. However, in the second scenario, 
The patient needs a healthcare professional. Could you explain more, please? The nurse is a human being who does not only act but also thinks and feels. The nurse also should rely on related facts, not assumptions. So, in the second scenario, the nurse correctly compiled data which includes headache and hypertension and she felt that hypertension might be causing headache and didn't assume that hypertension is just coincidental. Compiling these two facts made her aware of the patient need of advanced healthcare professional help. I do not understand the part of your theory where it says, nursing skills are carried out in order to achieve a specific patient-centered purpose rather than the completion of the skill itself. Oh, Bob. It means that the nurse in the second scenario could have just given a pain pill for the patient with no further actions, which is not right. But a skilled nurse with critical thinking will suspect something behind headache and act further in a timely manner to help achieving the patient-centered goal of complete recovery. What are the four main elements in your theory? Philosophy, purpose, practice, and art. Can you tell me more about philosophy? Sure. Philosophy is the nurse attitude and belief about life and how they affect reality. It includes three important components, respect for dignity and autonomy, individuality of each patient, and resolution based on personal and professional beliefs. What about purpose? Purpose is all activities directed toward the overall well-being of the patient. Uh-oh. What is the third one? This was expected from you, Bob. The third one is the practice. The practice are observable actions affected by the nurse's beliefs and feelings about meeting the patient's need for help. What about the last one? Art is the fourth and last one. Art includes understanding of the patient's needs and concerns, setting a target to improve patient's abilities according to the medical plan, and preventing complications and reoccurrences. This is the nursing process basic. Thank you Miss Ernstine or should I say Danke? Call me Mrs. Wiedenbach. Wieden what? Wiedenbach. Wiedentrek. Wieden. Forget it, Bob. My time is up now and thankfully I am a spirit and I don't have to stay here. So I hope you did enjoy watching that and you learned something from this presentation and be ready be prepared for your um, long exam and midterms so God bless you all